Hi! A few months ago, I made a video talking about why do the it girls quit, and thank you so much for all the love on that video. I wasn't expecting it. It was the first time that I posted a video like that, and I was fully expecting for that video to flop, but when you put, you know, it girls on the thumbnail of the video, of course it's gonna do well, and by it girls, I mean me. I, I was on the thumbnail. I was kind of thinking back on that video for multiple reasons. First of all, the fact that all the influencers that I talked about in that video, because when I talked about it girls, I talked about internet it girls, uh, all of them were lifestyle influencers. Think Emma Chamberlain, Best Dress, Claudia Slewski, mainly because those were my favorites who have all either quit or stepped away, but they're all lifestyle influencers, right? But while looking back on that video, I realized that especially because of that video and how well it did, I too quit being a lifestyle influencer. And although I'm not an it girl to anyone except my mother's eyes. And I kind of have to be an it girl in her eyes because I am her only child and that'd be kind of fucked up if she didn't see me as an it girl. But anyway, I realized that I never fully explained why someone like me who was a lifestyle influencer for four years just suddenly quit and kind of started a new genre of videos. And I want to emphasize how intentional that decision was and how calculated that decision was because it was something that I so desperately wanted to get out of for the longest time. And by get out of, I mean like the lifestyle genre. I didn't even know what lifestyle really meant until I was told by my manager that I am in the lifestyle category, all right? Lifestyle influencers range widely from beauty and style to health, food, and daily workouts, which wasn't really me, but it was also like not me. Like I have done all of those things, but uh, my old content revolved around my life primarily. It started with me in college. It started with showing you my apartments that I lived in, showed you my room decor, the way that I dressed, the things that I bought, food I was eating, what I was doing day to day, my friends, my family, my pets, my sometimes very rarely my relationship. I was the center of it and then my channel just surrounded around it. And that's how a lot of channels are. And people love that shit. But like I said, I did not accidentally fall into the commentary and the video essay space. It was very, very much so on purpose. Maybe today you're watching me for the first time and you've never seen my videos before, or maybe you just started watching me when I started making video essays and commentary videos, or maybe you're an old watcher and you've been around for a while and you know the ins and outs of my life more than I probably do. Hi, I missed you. <laughs> Cause this is my first time in over six months, I think, like just talking about solely me, which is very strange. I hope my video will give you some insight on not only why I made the decision to switch, but also why a lot of other influencers may be quitting as well and why they may be switching their content like total 180. And I think in 2023, that's gonna be like a huge boom is people dropping lifestyle, people dropping being influencers and kind of taking on a new genre of sorts, or maybe just drop it all together. I don't know. You heard it here first. I, I predicted it. Lifestyle influencers will not exist in 2023. Ooh. I'm so psychic. I made a whole video on my my psychic things that I did when I was I was younger. I don't actually see myself as psychic. I had delusions, okay? Anyway, I had undiagnosed OCD and I saw everything as a sign and a symbol, but I still think that video is funny because I'll still tell my friends, I'm like, I'm psychic. To make a long ass story short, I felt that I was giving absolutely no value as a human being anymore. That's the short answer. You want the long answer? Keep watching. I felt like I was truly exploiting myself like I have never before. And I never ever saw it as me exploiting myself because I would tell everyone like, no, like I just love doing this. I love sharing my life online. But there was a reason as to why I didn't do that in high school and why I didn't do it in middle school. And there was a reason why. And it's because I am a private person. I am a person who does not like to put everything on the internet. I love making content. I love making videos. I love editing. That's always been a passion mine since I was a little kid, but I am very selective about the things that I choose to put online. But when I decided to become a YouTuber full time when things were just aligning and working out for me and I was making videos two times a week and my whole channel was my name and it revolved around my life, I realized I needed to exploit every aspect of my life because that was the only way I was going to get better content. Like how was I supposed to, what was I supposed to talk about if not myself and not every facet of my life. Meaning that included my family, my friends, school, work, home life, everything. And thank God that I didn't really include my relationship like it very, very barely. And I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. There's nothing that I regret putting online. But if I got the chance to do it 
over again? Would I? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know if I would. I don't regret it because I think that some of the things that I talked about definitely helped people. I like to think that. Like when I talked about my mom having cancer and me being her caregiver, I know for a fact that helped people because of the responses that I got from when I did talk about it and people being like, thank you for speaking out about this. My family is going through something similar. So I know for a fact that helped someone else. And for that, my mom and I are, are like super happy that I talked about her situation a little bit online. I know that me talking about like my shitty roommate experiences helped someone else. And me talking about mental health online has helped people maybe not only go out and get a diagnosis for what they're going through or actually getting help and care for it and me talking about the troubles with college i know people who have transferred out of schools because they've watched my video i know people who went to temple university because of my videos which don't do that i'm not saying don't go to temple but don't go don't go somewhere because a youtuber goes there okay because they are showing the very very pretty parts of college i can tell you that much and i hope that i did not accidentally get someone to go to temple and then they fucking hate it but anyway there's a reason why temple university has not contacted me a single time since graduating to do a single thing with them like they have completely exiled me but anyway that's besides the point i know that those things have helped people because of my community being so fucking amazing and telling me and being the sweetest but i know that there are some things that i also could have kept myself and it'd be okay but but that's the main reason why i don't regret talking about a lot of things online is because I wanted to make that community and I wanted people to relate and know my life isn't all day in the life and pretty aesthetic videos with my friends and blah 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 like that wasn't it. I was also experiencing severe burnout. I was like reading books on how to stop being burnt out. There was nothing and I mean nothing that could bring me to do schoolwork and also making videos. Like there was a point where I just completely wanted to lay on the ground and like stare at the ceiling. Like I was that fucking burnt out and the thought of making any content was actually like bad <laughs> I don't want to use descriptive words because I'm going to get demonetized, but it was bad. So I was going through the motions for quite a long time because I was like, I need to keep the channel going somehow. I don't know what the future looks like for me. I hope I figure it out, but I don't know what to do because I don't want to keep making videos about myself. Every single time I have to pick up a camera and turn it towards me or holding it vlog style, I wanted to die because I was like, this just isn't me anymore. This just isn't what fulfills me. And I feel like I'm not adding value. And then on top of the burnout, I felt like I have said every single thing that I've ever wanted wanted to say. Having two podcasts and making two videos a week, there's nothing left for me to say. It was like 20, 22 at the time. What else is there for me to say? I've talked enough for the entire 22 years of my life. There was no story I didn't tell. There was no opinion that I didn't give. There was no advice that I didn't give. At that point, if I wanted to be honest and genuine, something needed to change and I needed to take my life and actually do something with it rather than just turning on a camera and going in this hamster wheel and pretending that I was actually making content that was fulfilling me because it was not fulfilling. It was fucking life sucking. So earlier this year, I started to reflect on like the type of videos that I was watching the most and almost all the videos that I was watching was video essays and commentary videos and these YouTubers who I like looked up to so much because they seemed like what they were making was a blast and for the first time since I started making videos, I had this huge motivation and spark to make videos like that too. Like I just genuinely felt inspired and I was like, I want to do that. I haven't felt that in like four, five years because four or five years ago, I was looking at lifestyle influencers and I was seeing what they were doing and I was like, wow, I really want to make that. That seems so fun. I want to talk about my life and I want to talk about my experiences and I want to show my days and I want to show what I'm doing with my life. This seems so fun. And suddenly, you know, I got that fix. I did what I wanted to do for four years and then I needed a switch and I wanted to find something new and I found that. I loved the idea of talking about topics and giving my own opinion still and still being me on camera, but without the video revolving around me. And God, am I so fucking happy that I found that. I decided to tell my managers about it. I decided to tell my friends, my family about it. I have this idea. I really, really want to switch up my content. I'm really nervous how people are going to take it because it has nothing to do with me anymore. And that's like the only reason why I have my following. And no one really knew how it was going to go over. But it was such a rush when it actually worked out. When it actually worked out and I was seeing that people were enjoying the new form of content, that was the most gratifying feeling I've ever felt in my life. Maybe that's a stretch. I don't know. The most gratifying moment that I've ever had in my entire life is giving birth to my cat. I'm being dead ass. Carried her for nine months. Had an epidural. Hospital birth. I wanted to do a natural home birth. I wanted to do a, a water birth. Um, not in my tub. I wanted to do it like in a little like kiddie pool. Um, 
and you know have a have a doula with me and everything but it just didn't work out so i see a lot of other people in the lifestyle space also dabbling and making like commentary and video essays and it's because it's fucking fun to not talk about yourself all the time it's fucking nice when your whole career doesn't revolve around you i want to emphasize that i don't think that all lifestyle influencers are not adding value. I, I really wanna emphasize that because that's the last thing that I wanna get out of this video. But you will know at the point in which you feel like you stop adding value. And that's just the point that I got to. It was fun to be honest when I was like in college and not all my videos were adding value. It was fun. Like sometimes I still wanna make videos that don't add value into people's lives. I just wanna make it because it's for me and it's fun and whatever. But to do it as a career, it was just like anxiety inducing and very depressive episode inducing. A lot of depressive episodes where I was just like, what's my purpose? I talk about myself online all day. Everything is about me. Me personally, I felt like just like a scumbag after a while. I've made many new friends since being in Philly. And also a lot of my friends have graduated college and you know, are working big people jobs, you know? Watching all of them feel like they are adding value into people's lives and feeling like their job is important or their job matters, it made me feel even more like a shitty person. You know those memes, the unemployed friend memes? Oh, the unemployed friend on Wednesday at 3 p.m. And it's like a picture of someone like walking through a forest. That was me. I was like the little unemployed friend who was, yeah. But there are so many lifestyle influencers who have added value. Oh my God. But for me, that time of my life came to an end. I needed to literally put it in the casket, bury it, cover it up, say my prayers, and leave. Just like how I decided before I finished college, I made the very, very intentional decision about a year and a half before graduating that I was no longer gonna make college content, like very, very sparingly, because I didn't want anyone to know me as a college influencer. That was my biggest fear of people still seeing me as a college YouTuber. That's not what I want to do. Like, I want to expand. I want to grow. I want to still have this as a career. And no fucking shade to like the 2010 influencer and YouTubers and everything, but I was not gonna pretend that I was still in college and make videos like YouTubers who were like 26 and making videos like they're still in high school, like my high school morning routine and they are not in high school. I was like, I'm not doing that. So I decided to get out of there early so that I could just establish myself as making the videos that I wanna make. Also, I started to value my privacy a whole lot more and I probably should have valued my privacy from the very start. I was safe and I was careful, but I am a new level of private, okay? I'm gonna be repeating the same influencers names because I watched these select few. Claudia Saluski, she talked about in her video how she doesn't feel like she's being very honest in her vlogs anymore because she's a lot more private of a person now and she can't show everything anymore. Like obviously you can't when your boyfriend's sister is Billie Eilish and although my life is not that interesting, I was like there are things that I want on camera and on the internet forever and there are things that I never want on camera. Not to mention when your privacy gets threatened, you yourself get threatened, you start to value your privacy a whole lot more more than ever before, okay? Getting yourself into murky water because someone really didn't like what you said in a video, it kind of fucks up how you view your own content. Regardless of anything that has ever happened though, like I said, I don't regret any of the videos that I've made. But as I'm kind of like growing into adulthood, which really hurts me to say, I'm 23 now. And I'm actually having, you know, a life outside of my hometown, gaining friends who I, value more than anything. I don't want to shove a camera in their face. My friend actually told me that when his wife and I started becoming friends, he was so worried that I was just gonna be pulling a vlog camera out like everywhere that we went. And I have never pulled out a vlog camera at all because that is just not what I wanna do. I'm all for capturing moments, but it just isn't my speed and it never has been. And I don't wanna pretend that it is. And I think a lot of YouTubers and influencers are finally getting to that point where people are like, I don't wanna pull out a camera anymore. There's nothing more that I want to, to record or take photos of. Or I was listening to an episode of Emergency Intercom the other day, which is like every day because it's like background noise from my brain at this point. It's getting bad. And then I subscribed to their Patreon and like I shouldn't have done that because then it's like, oh my God, there's more content to consume. Like I love Emergency Intercom, but that podcast is not intended to be consumed all like 60 episodes in the span of like two weeks. It's it it does something up here and I don't know what it is. They mentioned on the podcast the other day that they kind of think that content and making content will be a thing of the past in the future. In a few years, we might look back on creating content, be like, why did we ever do that? That seems impossible because it's been a thing, but before 
YouTube really creating content for the internet was not a thing. And we might see it go away one day and might cringe and look back at this. And that's fine. Like I'm I'm all for cringing on your past self and like it's fun. It's funny. Like I don't I don't regret anything. But I think we're growing away from it cuz it's so oversaturated. Everyone everyone and their mom creates content, you know? This is the part of the video where I talk about why I decided to go into like commentary video essays, whatever you decide to call my style of videos that I make now. I always grew up being told that I was too opinionated of a person, let alone a woman, and that no one was gonna like me, especially a man in the future. I was too opinionated. And that stuck with me, but not because I was like internalizing and being like, oh, that's true, but because it made me angry. Even if people don't like opinionated women, I don't care. I just don't. I love opinionated women. I think they're the best. <laughs> I am very much so influenced by opinionated women. I am very for opinions. If I could be sponsored by opinions, this video would be sponsored by opinions, okay? I don't believe in not taking a stance on anything. The best way that, that, my, that my mom would describe it in Polish is to be the human equivalent of yogurt. Like, you are just bland and nothing and like, yogurt's good. I guess yogurt kind of just sways wherever it wants wants to sway and like it's just like meh. That is not me. I am not the human equivalent of yogurt. I am the human equivalent of kombucha. I don't know. Strong, fizzy, fermented. If it spills on the ground, it smells like shit, but it tastes really good. I refuse to be silenced <laughs> and I refuse to not share my opinions because people don't like opinionated women. That's just it. To be quite frank, parents of elementary school kids can sometimes be the worst people ever. Like they are sometimes so catty. I remember when I was in elementary school, there were parents outside who would like gossip about some of the kids. The one thing that was very gossiped about me, little fourth grade parents, was that I had too many opinions. I spoke out too much when I felt like something was wrong. It was that and also that I, I tripped over a girl's new pair of Uggs and then she told her mom that I stomped on them, which I didn't do by the way. I genuinely did trip over her Uggs. But anyway, clearly it still, still matters to me. I wanted to make content that shares my opinions on things that still is about me because the fuck my channel name is me, but without having to do about my personal life. I don't want to give celebrity news. I don't want to give celebrity gossip. I don't care about that. I wanted to make content about topics that I give a shit about and that I wanted to talk about for a long time. I didn't want to have to do a crazy amount of research because I just wanted to already know what I was talking about because I do too much research in my free time. So even though it ruffled many feathers, I can tell you that much when I talked about why I think true crime isn't really that good and probably really bad for not only the brain, but for uh, us as a society. People were upset about that, but I was okay with that because at least I was able to have an opinion and at least I was able to share it. And at least someone wanted to listen. And that was cool as fuck to me. I like being able to talk about shows or movies sometimes because guess what? No one in my life wants to hear me talk about the same movie over and over and over again because all I do is rewatch shit. But guess what? People on the internet wanted to hear me and that that made it so much more fun. And it's nice because this time last year, I was doing pretty not so good. And I remember thinking to myself, I have nothing left to say. I have said everything I have ever wanted to say ever. I'm pretty sure there's video footage of me saying that multiple times. And now it's nice that like a year later, I'm in a really good spot of my life. I'm in my own fucking apartment that I got because of this goddamn YouTube channel. Thank you so much. I'm so appreciative that I get to have many things to say and I have many things to say all of a sudden. I'm very happy to talk and I have much to give. It feels like I'm not burnt out anymore. It seems like my cup is full again and like I'm, I'm ready to pour it out. <laughs> Ever since changing my content, it's also been so nice that most of the comments have nothing to do with me. It's very nice that not every comment is giving me anxiety to read because it either has something to do with the way that I look or the way that I sound, what I'm doing with my life or excess opinions. Like that's not normal to read every single opinion about you ever. Like in my own personal life, I don't care if someone is talking shit about me. That's that's not my business. So why is it my business on the internet? And if I want to like interact with my community, I have to read my comments. And how am I supposed to read my comments when like all of them are directly giving a, an opinion about me. You know what I mean? So it's nice that the content that I make now, it doesn't all have to do with me. And it's so much better for my brain. It's nice that my friendships and my relationships are 
they feel so much more my own and no one really gets to have an opinion on them anymore because I don't share them online anymore. And I've also learned just because I enjoy something or someone's content, it does not mean that I have to become it. Just because someone is a lifestyle influencer and is funnier than me, that doesn't mean that I have to be as funny. You know what I mean? Like with content, you can just enjoy it. What I'm trying to say is throughout this process, I've learned that I can just enjoy content. I can just consume it and like it and move on. Maybe take some inspiration from it but I don't have to become every single thing that I consume and that's also been so good for my brain because I'm doing a lot less comparing I think a lot of people online are going to come to the same realization that I had to come to the very hard way much therapy and much burnout that their content revolving around them is not always the healthiest thing for our brains and although it's still fun and enjoyable and you know some people have an amazing balance with it it isn't for everyone I think a lot of people are going to find areas or different genres of content that feel much more authentic to them. Think of like fucking Emma Chamberlain. I know I mention her all the time, but like she quit making YouTube videos. She makes some sometimes and her career revolves less around her. She's put more time and energy into things like her coffee company, her podcast, which still do heavily revolve around her and her likeness, of course. But even her podcast, it can be very broad. And if you listen to her podcast, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Her podcast is pretty broad. She's not that personal in there. And I think this is all calculated and very, very intentional because if we give hundred percent of ourselves to so many people it's impossible to save any for yourself with all that being said i do miss the mind numbing content that i used to make that's like what i consider it now some of it is just very mind numbing for the month of december i'm gonna say this really fast i'm attempting vlogmas but it's not gonna be like a full vlogmas it's gonna be like what i want as a vlogmas and like every other day you know what i mean and like i'm gonna try my best and do my thing and like we'll see what happens but like it's not gonna be like vlogs but i want you all to know that there will be mind numbing content coming soon in the month of december and that's what i have planned and back to regular schedule programming back in January. And I still want to sprinkle in some mind numbing content here and there because I still do enjoy it sometimes, but I just don't want my whole channel to revolve around it. So we'll see what happens. I hope you enjoy this month. Anyway, let's call it numbness, not vlogmas, but numbness. I'm scared about making personal content again, like a little bit because I'm like, oh my God, going back to my roots. Now that it's been that long, I'm worried people are not gonna give a shit, which is like kind of okay and kind of relieving, honestly. I'm kind of nervous people are gonna be disappointed and gonna feel like, what the fuck? But at the same time, it's like, sorry. But I am excited because I know I have a very cool ass community who has asked me for some of these videos that I'm gonna be making this month. I've gotten some requests to do some very specific things, new makeup routine, whatever, new playlist video, whatever. I wanna make the videos that that the OGs want to see from me and that I want to make and that I'm excited to make. And also this time of year is just mind numbing. And like, I think we all could all use some mind numbing content right now. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to end it off here because I think I've said everything I want to say. This video was like taking a warm bath with all of you. It was like personal, a little sweaty and kind of a little uncomfortable, but it was very pleasant and I feel better after it. And I'm probably going to take a shower immediately after doing it anyway. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you guys like this video, please make sure you leave it a like because I also out so much also leave a comment about what you would like to see for the following month and maybe I will do it. Even if it's like a commentary video, video essay video, mind numbing content, whatever. Make sure they subscribe if you want to be nasty. If not, you're disgusting. Also make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you want to follow me on my other social media, Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nikki Nasty because I'm still considered an influencer. I'm going to go now if you guys want to see my daughter who I, I birthed myself. There she is. I got an epidural for you. Anyway, I'm about to do it all over again soon. Oops. What? Bye.